Hey, horse friends. I'm Becca Salmon, and this is Southern Horse Talk. Today on the line with me, I have a cowboy from Batesville, Arkansas, who is making a two-year ride across 48 states in the United States. He's calling it the American Wish Ride, and he's doing it for Western Wishes, and his name is Ty Sturgeon. Welcome to the show, Ty. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you, ma'am? I- I'm doing great. And, you know, I-, I saw you on Facebook. Someone had shared one of your posts about arriving in Alabama, and it caught my attention. And so that's how I found out about you and read all about you over the past day or so. But can you share with the folks that- who are listening, you know, why you started with this and what the inspiration was for it? Well, I was actually sitting there and I was talking to my dad and one of his buddies, Adam Garcia, which was one of my friends too, Adam, come over there and sit down with us. He mentioned doing this ride. I was sitting there thinking, I don't know about that. Just, you know, <laughs> it wasn't for the charities or anything like that. It was just, you know, to do it. Well, I got to thinking about it. About a week and a half goes by and I see this video on my email. I didn't realize that I'd got it, and it's been a couple of days old. I looked, and it's a video on Western Wishes, and I seen that, and I just really felt the need to do something for them. And I've well, actually, awesome. in my ride, I've already been on the road about two years, but I'm oh, actually, honey. this ride's, yeah, it's probably going to wind up being three to four more years. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And I've, I, I've started working with another charity also, other than Western Wishes, and it's called New Horizon Ranch out of Kansas, and it's a therapeutic riding center. Okay, awesome. So so it's you fair. are how old now? Well, I'm actually 22 years old. 22 years old. And so you were you were in Arkansas, and you were, you know, riding horses, doing whatever you do, and being a singer-songwriter. Mm-hmm. And so, so yes, what did you do out there? What kind of disciplines did you participate in? Well, mostly before this ride, I was actually, you know, I was just more or less just a trail rider, and I would tune up some horses for some people. My grandpa, he always had me on a new horse, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, I just rodeoed. I was uh, saddle brought, bareback bronc, and bull ride, you know. Okay, Awesome. So, so what do your what do your rodeo friends say about you and you know what you're doing? Are they very supportive? Oh yeah, I, I, most of my friends are behind. Well, all of my friends are behind me, especially in my hometown. You know, they've been great about it. And, you know, every time I come in off the road, see, I had to start doing it in sections because I didn't just I, I didn't want to kill a horse. So what I'm doing is every July and August, whenever it gets too hot. To, too hot for the horse to be rode mm-hmm. you know like i ride them i take him off the road and i make sure that he's a hundred percent you know and drain him good and start looking for some a new horse this horse's name is actually rudy okay so tell us about your horses i mean how many have you had over this that two-year period i've had two horses on this ride the first horse okay. i got really attached to his name was edward and Edward went 2,900 miles for me. I mean, every wow. step. And uh, somebody offered me a lot of money for him, and I couldn't sell him. I just couldn't sell him, you know? Yeah. So I told myself, I said, that'll never happen again. So I got me a new horse. And now I'm selling a horse to fund my ride, you know, because you know, I still got to buy feed and things like that. And right. everybody knows that's expensive. <laughs> yeah. Now, now tell us, you know, about the, the, the logistics of how you actually, you know, Raise do the money. ride and how you take stuff with you and, you know, the, you know, actually being on the road. I mean, because are you due by feed when you get to the next town or how does that work? Well, that's how I used to do it. I used to have to buy feed every day. And I know that kind of sounds crazy. I mean, I'd be able to take two or three days with, you know, with me, but. I was just weighing down my horse and I, you know, my Facebook started getting a little bigger and a little bigger and a little bigger. And after it got to a certain point, now I try to line my stops up and what I'll do is I'll just ask them 
whenever I talk to them on Facebook or on the phone, I say, would y'all mind running back to the stop that I was at the night before and, you know, grabbing my feed with me? And that way my horse always gets fed the same thing. I don't have to worry about him tying up or anything like that. You know, everything stays the same for him. Okay, awesome. So what about, you know, just for you? I mean, you got, obviously you have to change clothes and you got to lie down somewhere. <laughs> How are your, your basic needs being taken care of? Well, um, I mean, sometimes I sleep under the stars. Sometimes I get a bed. But, uh, I, everything's been going pretty good. I mean, like right now, okay, I'm wearing the same clothes I wore yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is usually something I talk about, but um, like right now, I'm wearing the same clothes as I had on yesterday, and I wear a jacket every day because, you know, if it rains, I want to have rain just, you know. Right. But, um, I try to do laundry every other day, and if it ain't every other day, it's like every third day, you know. But I right. carry... I, I, I'll be specific with you. I carry two changes of clothes and that's it. And I have clothes to sleep in. Okay. Now, what what about your your horse? I mean, do you have do you find people along the way that'll put your horse up in the stall overnight, or does he could you just tie it in I, the woods with I you? I do. I really don't like stalling him. If I'm camping, I will just you know I, I tie him up or just let him go on hobbles. Because and really, a lot of times I'll just let him go. You know that way he's not off stiff. But either way, I have to ask people nowadays. See, nowadays you have to ask. You don't really have a choice. And somebody's going to have cattle. And even if I, you know, I don't get to stay in the house or anything, I can still camp on this place. You know. Right. So, I mean, it, that's awesome. I mean, it, it's still I'm doing it the old school way, but. You know, in order to make a difference for the charities and stuff, and, you know, raise them up money. I try to stay, you know, in the social media as much as possible. And I, I charge my phone with a solar panel charger and stuff. And it keeps it going. Now, now, how does that work with uh, the charities and organizing benefit events? You know, do, do you come to these events You know, and, and they know that you're coming, so they plan an event? How does that work? Well, there's a music festival tonight in Chatham, Alabama, mm -hmm. and I am actually going to get to speak at it. I already oh, asked, cool. you know, they said, oh, yeah, you know, you can speak. So what I'm going to do is all the money raised tomorrow morning, I'm going to go, and, or whoever I'm staying with, I'll say, hey, you mind writing me out a check for this, and I'll give them the cash that, I, that people give me if they give cash. And that way, I can, you know, know for sure that, you know, whenever I'm, I, I get texts while I'm riding, and mm -hmm. I'll mail them straight to the charity. And the people in Alabama, let me tell you, y'all have been so good to me so far. I've been here two or three days, and I already feel at home, so. Oh, that's awesome. Yay, Alabama. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Roll Tide. Yeah, there you go. Um, well, I guess you have to be careful saying that. You might piss off some other people. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'm a hog fan, but, you know, I, I like the Arkansas Razorbacks because I am from Arkansas, but you know how it goes. <laughs> now, um, you, you did mention social media and, you know, keeping on top of that. And you have over 28,000 likes on your Facebook page. And you also have your website, which is AmericanWishRide.com. dot com. So, yes, you know how how are you how are you using and leveraging all that to get sponsors and uh, to get donors for the for the charity? Well, what I'm doing is like <clears throat> if somebody wants to make a pledge, a lot of times people aren't doing the pledges anymore. They're just writing out checks because every pledge that has ever been made, I've already went farther than that. I've already been 2,000 miles. So, I mean, people know that I'm going to keep going, you know. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's to the point where, you know, they realize, oh, hey, he's serious about this. So, if somebody wants to donate to the charity, 
they can actually go to AmericanWishRide.com and go straight to Western Wishes website. And, you know, it is very simple to donate. Everything, you know, pretty easy. And if they'd like to donate to New Horizon Ranch, they can go to NewHorizonRanch.org. It's a great organization as well. Awesome. Now, now, do some of the people uh, that you're helping, do they get to come and ride along with you for a mile or so? I, yeah, I've actually, I walked seven miles one day. And, uh, hold on, I'm getting off my horse. Uh, I walked seven miles one day, and I had a little man ride with me. Caleb was his name. Caleb rode with me. And, man, he was awesome. I was wearing chaps in Oklahoma that day, and it was hot, you know. <laughs> so, but. so you also, um, you're also a singer and a songwriter. Can you tell us about some of the songs that you put together because of this? Yeah, I wrote a song called "Wish" about my ride. You can actually look past Sturgeon Wish, you know, and put that in on YouTube and find something or find the song and. Uh, it's a really good song. I wrote it about a kid that I had met in Illinois whenever I was riding through there. Great kid, but he had leukemia, and he got me thinking. And I'd always been into singing. I was one of them shower singers, and finally, <laughs> I come out of the shower and started singing, you know. But, and the, the being in the shower always makes you sound better. <laughs> So um, yeah. you also um, you've also talked about on your your blog here that you will be writing a book after you finish this ride. Can you tell us yes, a little bit ma'am. about that? Well, basically, it will be the main stories. I, I I don't like keeping a daily journal because I'm going to be on the road so many years. But I do like the stories that mean something to me are going to go in this book and. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm I'm probably gonna have to save ten, fifteen copies, so I always got one because I want to remember them stories. You know. Exactly. So, so you know, you mentioned that you're gonna be on the road for a little while longer. How many more years do you think it's gonna be? It's gonna be three to four years. Wow. Now, now why is that? Is there a certain is there a certain money goal? I mean, that's how long you think it'll take, or why why three or four more years? Well. The money goal, um, the, the goals, I, I don't really have a goal anymore. I just, I want to make them as much as I can, as often as I can, because they deserve it. So, yep. what I'm doing is, is, you know, whenever I'm riding into town, and I meet up with the people to try to get in the paper and stuff, you know, and talk to them, I'll have them posted on Facebook. And then a lot of the city officials and stuff will post it on their Facebook. And then people will start coming to donate, you know, usually wherever I'm at. Or I'll do a speech right. somewhere and they'll come and donate. And it, it it's just a real blessing. But I really do encourage people to, you know, donate and give if they don't mind. Because I, I, they get 100%. Like the charities get 100%. I don't get any profit off of anything. The only thing I make money off of is whenever I sell T-shirts. So. Okay. Now, now I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, uh, I have a son who has to have um, surgery on his legs at Shriners in Greenville, South Carolina. Really? Coming up in July. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been to meetings over at the, the uh, Shriners Temple here in Birmingham, Alabama. Mm-hmm. And I have yeah. seen the generosity of the donors. And within about 15 minutes, I saw them raise about $20,000. And I could not oh, believe yeah. the generosity. It's just, it's just amazing. So, you know, we really appreciate people like you and, and bringing light to it because so many kids out there are needing help. So thank well, you. Thank, you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Well, I guess, um, I guess I'm going to let you go and get back on your horse and ride off. But... Um, we All appreciate right. you talking to us on Southern Horse Talk, and we will get this shared out for you on social media. But tell tell folks where they can go to find more information about you and to make donations. 
Well, if you would like to follow my ride on social media, you can follow it at Pasturgeon, that's T-Y-E-S-T-U-R-G-E-O-N, and I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I've also got a Pinterest, but I really don't know much about it. Okay. <laughs> um, and if, if they would like to donate, they can go to westernwishes.org, or if they would like to donate to New Horizon Ranch, they can go to newhorizonranch.org. Both are great charities. They're good charities and they're true. These kids are amazing, and they deserve it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ty. I really appreciate it. Take care of your horse and take care of you, and I guess we will talk to you again soon. All right. God bless y'all. All All right. Thank you. And listeners, viewers, you can go to Southern Horse Talk on Facebook, the group, and join over there. Share your pics, your videos, and help us share the Southern Equine lifestyle. Check us out at southernhorsetalk.com and alabamahorsetalk.com. Thanks for listening.